past theories? Well, the if you look back over the history of the past 70 years, it uh, turns out it's very much like what happens in the standard sciences. If you're teaching physics, let's say, to uh, graduate students, if you're still teaching what you taught five years ago, either your brain did or the field is dead. Uh, in the sciences, there are constant changes, new discoveries, new insights, the revisions of past theories, sometimes abandonment and replacement of new ones. Now, that happens in all the sciences that are alive. And it's happened in linguistics in the last 70 years. Uh, so if you go back to the beginning, uh, the, it, the basic ideas have stayed pretty much the same. So the idea of about what I call the basic property, the internal computational device that yields an infinite array of uh, structured expressions that capture thoughts, that basic concept has remained unchanged. Uh, in the, er the question of how it's implemented, that's changed. So in the early days, as some of you may know, uh, it was assumed that the implementation is by two kinds of rules phrase structure rules, transformational rules. By the 1960s, it was recognized that phrase structure rules can't possibly work. Uh, their conceptual and factual proper problems with them, they were tossed out in favor of deeper theories. Uh, over the years, the transformational rules, which were originally quite complex, have been repeatedly simplified. Uh, by the 1990s, a number of us, me included, began to think that enough had been learned about the complexities of language so that we might try to approach what is sometimes called the strong minimalist thesis, show that all of the basic properties of languages can be accounted for by a computational procedure which uses the simplest possible combinatorial operation called merge in recent years with uh, invoking general computational principles, principles of computational efficiency, uh, minimal operations and so on. But we can think of these as basically natural laws which are invoked in every area where there's computation, including language. Well, the, the new theories, the ones I'm, I've been working on for some years, uh, proceed to develop these ideas. And I think it's opening quite new vistas. Now, this is the first time in the long millennial, long history of linguistics that it's possible actually to demonstrate that fundamental properties of language, which were never even noticed in the past, simply follow directly from the simplest computational operations, along with general principles of computational efficiency. There are many com uh, complex and uh, uh, properties of languages have been falling within this framework. It's a long way from proving that everything does, but it's quite astonishing progress, I think. And a new, uh, quite a new picture of how the mind works, how language works, how the core of human creativity and thinking works. So that's a, a, a response to both aspects of your question. The early mechanisms repeatedly have been improved, changed, over, overthrown, modified. The basic core principles, core ideas, which actually have a, a Galilean origin, well, those have been sharpened, improved, but fundamentally remain intact. And I think we're now on the verge of uh, having, for the first time, uh, genuine explanations of uh, linguistic phenomena, uh, genuine in the sense that they meet the fundamental condition of evolvability. They could have evolved. Uh, in a, in, under the conditions that we know are the conditions of 
evolution of language, the general condition. 